Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, it is the 6th of April. Eh? 6th of April. Um, it's a month or so before we start racing. Like I said, we're going to just give a quick update every day. A little video on what we do at our loft. Um, today is Saturday, so we cleaned the loft this morning. And um, the birds went for a bit of a fly around the house. Um, at this stage, it's no longer needed for us to flag them. We just open the loft and they go up to the, the roof and then they go up into the sky by themselves. They fly about an hour now on their, on their own. Um, at this point, they split into two groups. We call it the A and the B team. Seems like the, the larger group disappears and is ranging quite nicely. And then we've got a smaller group that tends to want to stay closer to home. Um, in the past, they used to think that is the best pigeons, is the ones that flies away. And But it turned out one of the best pigeons I ever owned was one of the laziest flyers around the loft. So you can never say until um, you know, you've actually tested them and you've put them to the basket. Um, they are quite hungry, they're on, on diet. Uh, right here at the back, they're already sensing that we are going to mix food now. So we can hear them in the loft. And um, So I'm just going to show you what we feed and how we feed. Um, and this is maybe going to be a bit of a, a controversial one, especially around this area. That, um, the way I'm going to show you how I feed is... I've been advised by some not to do it this way, but I yet my I want to because it makes sense to me. And uh, like I said, this year is an experimental year, so if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Then we know. Um, I've got the luxury to do a bit of experiments this year because our goal is not to win union points or club points this year. It's merely to see. Um, to refine our system and to see what we work with in terms of the birds. So that, that gives me a bit of room to, to try a few things. But I think, um, but let me show you how we're feeding. Um, we go into the feed room. We'll just, uh, I've got a, a normal. Uh, breeding mix that we've got um, it's got a lot of maize and finer seeds a uh, bit of pellets in there, a bit of peas and a bit of sunflower so it's a very basic um, mix that, that we do use so what is going to cause the controversy at this stage of the game to get the weight down, we are feeding 20% uh, of the breeding mix and then we are feeding 80% barley. So it's a good quality barley um, in the husk. It's nice and plump and cut finely. So it doesn't have any of the sharp ends. So it's a good quality one. Um, and we we do this 80% so two tins of the breeding and we've got uh, eight of these uh, barley and that gives you the 80-20 ratio yeah, so um, I said eight so tins of barley I actually miscounted there and I only took seven but yes the ratio is eight um, times eight portions of barley and two portions of your breeding mix. So yeah, I need to go back to school and learn to count. A good mix. So it's predominantly barley in here. Um, but what we did notice since we've been feeding the barley like this, uh, the birds has gone quite high up into the sky and the fly was intent and speed. Um, and where I've now actually picked up on this particular recipe um, to feed is actually on YouTube as well. So a guy called Frank McLaughlin from McLaughlin Lofts in the USA. He um, 
he, f this is, he swears by this system, and um, it's the way he feeds, and for those of you who know, he's quite a uh, successful around the one love scene, and in the club scene in the US, so, um, so it makes sense to me, and it's economical, because over here in South Africa, uh, the go-to mixture for most uh, fanciers is actually to go to sunflower. So, to get yeah, the so what I mean when I say the go-to mixture is sunflower, I actually mean that um, even a lot of reasons most fanciers um, around this area, uh, one of the uh, at least where I fly, like, they, they don't use barley, use but they barley, use sunflower as part of the uh, mixture to bulk it up and, and increase the volume and uh, this is now not and, the and, and so it's not the husk of uh, sunflower the it's, the, even is that it's, it's still in the husk so it uh, increases the volume and the uh, enough fiber uh, content of the, the uh, mix of that they use itself, and it seems um, that's how they um, keep the pigeons light and one of the reasons i don't use sunflower this year I just can't find a good quality sunflower, um, and there's been many cases but, uh, that I know of that the sunflower has actually been uh, contaminated with uh, toxins uh, and uh, bacterial infections content. and stuff. And the guys so I'm a bit scared of uh, it, uh, but let's see how the barley goes going forward. The of your yeah, so what I mean so when I say the go to mixture sunflower, I actually mean that. Um, but one of Most the things that I is, um, around this area, my, at least where I fly, uh, they, they don't use barley, but they use sunflower um, as part of the mixture to bulk it up and increase the volume. Um, and uh, this is now not the, it's not the husk of sunflower, it's, the, it's still in the husk, so it increases the volume and the uh, fiber content of the uh, mix that they use. and. Um, that's how they um, keep the pigeons light. Anyway, and one of the reasons I don't so use sunflower this year, mix. I just can't find a good quality um, sunflower. And there's been and many cases parts, that I know of that the sunflower uh, uh, is actually being uh, contaminated with uh, toxins and um, so an bacterial infections uh, and stuff. So I'm a bit scared um, of it. Um, but let's see how the barley goes going forward. On a Saturday like today, I like to add a little bit of um, red cell to my feet. Now uh, you're supposed to measure this out very carefully. It's quite thick, it's the last of it. I put about a don't do what I do, measure it out, it's about a teaspoon. So I put it in the same tin. Um, normal water from the tap. I'll just give it a good mix. Like so, and uh, as you all know, red cell has been around since I think before I was born. It's actually a horse mineral um, supplement, and it's got all your vitamins in vitamin A, D, E, copper, magnesium, all your um, uh, micro minerals, and then of course, the big thing that people like about the Red cell is the it's the iron iron contact which is 8,900 milligrams per liter which is quite high and as we know why it's called red cell um, iron increases the um, uh, amount of red cells that's in the blood more red cells you've got the more oxygen can actually go to the muscle the better the performance and that's why you know, all I do now I just Pour this over my feet. We'll take it by hand, mix it through. So it's nice and wet. But I don't do this every day. It's just like once a week that we do this. And um, we'll just give it a bit of a mix there. Eh? The other thing that I'm going to add to dry it off with is Brewer's Yeast. Uh, this one <coughs> is actually from Diamond Pigeon Stud, uh, Derek Streak's product. Um, but you can get it in the pharmacies, it's quite 
it's a little difficult to get but we use this one from the streak and as you know Bruce he's the main benefit of it this is actually it's with vitamin B complex vitamins uh, that is in there and it's obviously it's also quite a high uh, protein value to it so I just pour with a free hand a bit of brewer's yeast and then mix it through and this dries off the grain quite nicely before we actually gonna uh, give it to the, the pigeon now this is enough for two feeds um, so we'll be giving this tomorrow again um, I think it's a little bit too much um, how much do we feed? Uh, one of these cans is enough for 12 pigeons so it's easy just count your amount of pigeons so I'm gonna give about what, 80 pigeons so what is that son? 6 cans more or less 6, six and a half cans somewhere there so one of these cans is enough for for 12 pigeons and this is your normal uh, tint fruit or tint vegetable can or your baked bean can um, I don't know it's become a bit of a uh, uh, well known everyone uses a, a, a vegetable can to feed their birds because it comes from the old days the old people used to do that so we're gonna do that too all right so I'm gonna pause quickly Okay, so now it's feeding time again. Um, we're gonna add our grit. Um, like I said yesterday, on yesterday's video, we like giving a little bit each day. And I've got another secret that's coming tomorrow. One of my funny things. I've got a, one of my friends, um, Richard Painter. He always says, he doesn't understand me because I always have something weird going on. <laughs> Some weird thing I do that's in my mind. But this I've actually learned from my grandfather. Maybe I should share it now and then we'll give it tomorrow, what I mean. And then I'll show you this now. But anyway, we give grit uh, fresh, just like one or two spoons full, just before we feed. Look at these eggs. They are hungry because they are now confined to the barracks and they are actually on diet. They had a nice open loft today and they had a nice fly. Uh, what I liked, like I said, they fly, flew um, by themselves more than an hour. And they seem to be enjoying the milk, so those who missed it, we we give the milk and vinegar mixture every day uh, if you want to know more about that I've got other, other videos out specifically just on the milk and vinegar and its benefits and yesterday we just showed you how to mix it and the ratios and all that so um, just have a look at the other video that we did yesterday it's titled 6 April 5 April but just have a look there um, and this we give every single day that's our milk and vinegar mixture so let's give them a feed where is the food okay so we're about to feed and there's a few stubborn ones outside the loft but if we give a whistle they should go in there eh? oh. oh, 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 oh. a few stupid that's the right way to go. Oh. They know the tray by now. I'm just going to grab the feeding trough. One of the things that you need to kind of consider is when you have your feeding troughs, I've got these very simple Oasis plastic containers that I use as troughs, but don't let them lie around on the floor because the mice uh, do get into them and uh, they 
like you can drop it, I don't like them to eat from dirty plates. So we'll they are. Have you guys as you can see, they are actually overly hungry. So what we're going to do now to get some order here, if I can get in here, I'm going to close them off, the sections. That's fine. And as we speak, the, is it either rain's falling or is it hail falling? One thing, I'm just going to close them off. I'm going to let a few in here. Come, come apart from you, Ladika. A few more. Come, come, come. That we don't have too many in a section, otherwise they fall over each other. That's one. Two. And three. Okay. Okay boys. Feeding time. On the back. Right. So as you can see they they are quite hungry. They're, um, there's obviously a few cities there. I need to actually add another feeding trough. One point. Eating the 80 20 mix that we just talked about, and um, yeah, one tin is enough for about 12 pigeons, but I sometimes give a little bit more um, to make sure everyone gets a little uh, enough food. Just pause it here. Okay, so they finishing up eating. They're all gonna have a, a wee bit of the milk drink, as you can see there. And uh, I'm gonna get this on video where he's drinking with it. Come on now, boy. There we go. Coming in for a drink, fighting over the water trough. There we go. So they quite enjoy the the milk. I like it when they. When they're quite busy and noisy, and you can kind of feel the energy in it. Um, then you know your loft is healthy. And now they're starting to drink water, and they've just about finished their food. Um, I like to have a balance where I know there's about four pigeons that came up, and they went to the drinker, then I know, okay, they've had enough and when they finish there should be like one or two grains of um one or two grains of barley left in the troughs and we know we actually are gave enough um okay um ladies and gents so today is saturday like i said so we clean the loft today and we clean the sand so the place is looking much cleaner than what it did on the previous video. It was about two weeks that we left it as it was. Uh, we were a bit busy, but um, as you can see, the sand is now sifted through. How long did it take us? About half an hour, huh? Yeah. In the loft, mm. the entire loft. So it's really not that much work. So we still have the benefit of the um, 
the deep litter system with the fine sand in it um, very very fine pieces of see all your bacteria your probiotics and your bacteria that's beneficial in terms of a deep litter is still in here but it's clean you don't have to walk on the I won't say that ugly word because my young daughter is here you don't have to walk in the droppings all the time um, and it's clean so we clean the purchase they sleep they're sleeping on a clean bed new sheets and the thing about the sand is they kind of enjoy it it looks like they're having a beach party and uh, but now if you can just stand there young lady um, she's gonna be on camera this is my youngest daughter um, just give me the camera too this is my son he's the oldest of my children and these two have now taken to the pigeons uh, this bloke is getting taller and taller he can barely fit into the loft he's more than six foot tall and he's first 16 years old anyway so they've taken to the pigeons so what's happening today my youngest the name is what's your name Claudette. Claudette. your name uh, Henry Jr. aka Jakes Jakes with a big voice as you can hear <laughs> all right so but today's Claudette's day so she is flying a junior team this year she asked dad I want to also fly pigeons that's of course it makes me very very happy so she gets to choose 10 pigeons of her own um, and I said to her she's got the pick of the loft and we're gonna actually now let her choose and see what she chooses, and then we're gonna handle a few of them and we're gonna tell you a little bit more about them she so you've got a pigeon there Claudette yeah, okay let me help you out Jake's very hold of okay so her hands are still very small we're getting used to handling these pigeons let's see what we've got so the first one she picked is number 383 it's a grizzle uh, hen um, still molting a little bit Claudette but it's nearly through it is through it's just a little bit of bolt and body molt beautiful little bird see the eye nice eye it's clean it's soft as silk so this bird was actually a gift yes this is the one from Cory I believe am I right um, yes I am not sure yes this is Cory Lee a friend of ours in the club he gifted us a bird and he'll be very happy that you choose one of his birds and so now we need a marker ring where are they okay so take out the claudette take out one of those rings and we're gonna mark her uh, 10 pigeons with the green marker rings okay, pause. and there we go Number one, three eight two is yours. Also the numbers Oscar. Okay, keep so long no again. Okay, so um Claudette has chosen this one. I was at this one alone. Um but she didn't, so it's yours. A deal is a deal, eh? I suppose. You suppose? Of course it's a deal. This is one of my favorites. Um it is four one four. Uh, it's actually bred from its grandmother is the mother of my loft uh, 1521 Derby um, one of the best pigeons I ever owned and still own she still breeds still this day um, and she's a trip to Janssen the father and then her mother is 628 Derby uh, which is obviously trip to Janssen, but we put her um, Her father is actually a Hoymans uh, cock uh, With also with the Mona Lisa line in it, so um, her mother and Grandmother won me many races the grandmother was a triple winner and then the father of this one is 145 um, he is a Tom Lock out of the Turbo Tom lines. So 
and this one is silky silky smooth I love it so yeah well done okay so that's pigeon number two three two eight and just to show the people what we like in a good pigeon um, I like it to be buoyant corky light it's like an empty paper bag but it's still full I like it to you know to have a bit of spunk even when it does that it fights back when you hold the beak I like a short forearm in a pigeon um, I like a strong vent uh, not a wide vent a narrow narrow vent bones but for me it's uh, more important for you to have a strong vent and a strong back but still able to still flexible in the same sense as well and then obviously one of the things we look at is the throat it's going to be difficult for you to see but if you can see this one's got a very narrow slit um, a breathing hole in the middle it's like a keyhole shape very narrow it sits right at the back of the um, the tonsil um, it doesn't fall to the left or to the right it sits nicely at the back um, and then also the slit at the top is quite narrow thin the combs is perfect this one has got um, kind of finer combs and uh, some of the experts say that that's indicative of a middle distance bird but I don't give that too much credence for me the bottom part is more important if a pigeon can breathe it can fly so yeah, congratulations Claudette. So we're gonna put you a ring on this one. Okay. Yeah. I mean I can kiss what you will kiss. Uh week is bread from the spritzies. This is a spritzy cock. And um, this was actually bred by you, no? Yeah. So this is my son's pair. So the uh, father is actually a spritzy Oscar cock. Uh, what that was inbred for stock by um, my good friend, Uncle Nick Duplessy. Um, uh, the Oscar and spritzy families that he built up um, was kept and improved on over a period of 25 years I was fortunate to acquire all his birds from him in the entire Spritzy family that he's built up over many years uh, many champions so anyway it's an Oscar uh, Spritzy um, cock this it's a nice little mealy pie and I've got a high hopes for for this pigeon also and uh, this pair that we had uh, bred us some of the, our favorite pigeons um, and the Spritzy Janssen line is quite influential in our loft this year and as you know Spritzies are basically just Janssens as well so we've got a very strong Janssen base in the loft you can find that, right? Yeah. help Boy. Another one that she chose. This is a little <laughs> special, actually. Uh, three double nine. So this is a light checkered hen. This is a patri. Uh, this particular pigeon was gifted to me by uh, the eggs. Was gifted to me by uh, my friend Richard Painter. Um, we all know the famous painters. And this is actually out of one of his best. Uh, races last year, so my daughter has got a good keen eye for good pigeons, ne Claudette? Uh, maybe I should actually ask her to choose the pigeons when we pair them up later this year. But anyway, look at that little head. It's a very, very, it's a small pigeon, but it's very, very buoyant and light. But what I want to show you, one of the signs of quality, if you look at the feet, um, this was shown to me by Joe Gomez. I've got a video on this where he speaks about the particulars. But you look at the feet, it's flat. It doesn't have any warts on it or any roughness. Um, it's warm and it's soft to the touch. Um, it's not puffy. 
And his theory is because that's an indication of good blood circulation and quality is one of his um, selection criteria. We don't select on this on, on this particular way, but it's just interesting to note that many of the good pigeons that we've got actually do have the comp uh, attribute. So maybe there is something um, in there. Again, this one has got a nice little short forearm, short wing. So this is probably going to be a bit of a sprinting pigeon, but one who never knows. And she handles like a million dollars. Silky, silky smooth. Well done, my girl. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, we will be um, doing a few videos every day um, to join us in our journey in the pigeon season that's lying ahead. And um, yeah, thank you for, for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. You can leave a comment. Um, it's always nice to hear from everyone. So yeah, tomorrow we will drop another video where I will reveal one of my grandpa's secrets.